As always, before I run my sample, I'll rinse the electrode, stirrer, dispenser, and ATC thoroughly with reagent grade water to remove all traces of carryover from the last titration. I measure 100 mils of the sample in a graduated cylinder and transfer to a clean beaker. I'll lower the holder into the solution and select Start Titration from the Titration PreCheck screen. Since I've chosen the Manual Sample ID option, I can type in the name I want saved in the log. I'll use Sample 2. The sample volume is 100 mils, and I touch Save Run to start the titration. The titrator begins a pre-stir and starts measuring pH. When the pH reading stabilizes, the initial pH of the sample is displayed. Then the titrator begins to make automatic additions of titrant. I've decided to run three cycles of my sample to demonstrate the repeatability of this titration. I'm skipping ahead here to show the results displayed on screen after the second cycle. Note that the titrator is programmed to find endpoint 1 at pH 4.5 and endpoint 2 at pH 4.2. I rinse thoroughly between the titrations, as always. This is important for the accuracy and repeatability of my titrations. Again, I measure 100 mils of the sample in a graduated cylinder and transfer to a clean beaker. I can run one to five cycles for each sample. This is my third and last cycle for this sample. I'll lower the holder into the solution and select Run Third Cycle, then Save Run to accept the 100 mil volume and run the titration. When the three cycles are done, I will choose Complete to end the titration and see the results summary. The summary shows the average value and the percent RSD for both endpoints of the three cycles. Note that the percent RSDs are quite good, 0.16% for the first endpoint at pH 4.5, and 0.24% for the second endpoint at pH 4.2. From the average results, I can calculate the low level alkalinity as two times the pH 4.5 result minus the pH 4.2 result, which is 4.73 mg per liter as calcium carbonate.